button right here. Push that. And you can see everybody from YouTube and Facebook driving in. If there's an issue, they're going to let you know there first.
America's bedrock principle of religious freedom is being severely tested by right. the pandemic. One Singing minute. has been banned at all church services in California. We need to bend the curve. I can feel something inside of me like we've got to take a stand. Christian singer and activist Sean Foyt leading what's called Let Us Worship. This guy is probably responsible for hundreds of deaths. We thank you, Lord. And there is another story that the media is telling it is one of hope. There's a pandemic, there's a plague, here's a move of God. It's gonna change America. The whole thing is fear, man. It's fear, it's intimidation. Courage is taught when you see it. You can't think of it as five, principles. Okay. You have to see it model. Christians are rising up, I'm telling you guys. Life overcomes darkness every day. This is not political, this is biblical. Super Spreader, with the PG-13, in theater center. We need to bend the curve in the state of California. Social distancing works. Stay home and stay alive. Yeah, and then and then uh, if you need anything, I can relay it back. Can affect if you want. It'll be your like you know, close up. The governor of California came up with a new set of restrictions. One of those restrictions was you can no longer sing in church anymore. Period. Full stop. And I remember when he said that, and I heard that, I was like, okay, it's on. Suicide rates are exploding. Drug and alcohol use is exploding.
Just like we see Jesus tell the disciples to pray that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We believe this is the season to bring the kingdom to the capitals of cross America. Join with us over the next two years as we journey to see the fires of revival burn in every single U.S. capital. This is a monumental and ambitious dream that God has given us, and we cannot do it without you. Now is the time. Let us worship. You guys ready? Nebraska for Jesus. Come on, say it. Nebraska for Jesus. <laughs> We're so honored to be here tonight. This is our 26th capital. And we are joined by pastors and leaders from across the state. We always kick off our time together by praying and inviting God's presence to come. So can you do me a favor? Can we lift our hands together? And can we join these like pastors a and these shot. leaders as they yeah, it's pray? Let's wide. invite God's presence right here to Lincoln, Nebraska, in front of the Capitol. We gather here in Lincoln, Nebraska to declare the name of Jesus Christ as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We are breaking down every stronghold that has been raised up against the knowledge of God. We are ushering in the release of the Holy Spirit and the power of God over his people, Lord God, and over this state. Lord God, we declare you are King and you are Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence here tonight. We lift you up high and higher, Lord God, for you said, if my name be lifted up, you would draw all men unto us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And Father, just as George Washington looked at before his ship, this flag, the only way that we can win is with an appeal to heaven. Lord, we are enjoying ourselves to be a brother of the dead of our family. This is what I'm saying. That we would be a nation that would be a man's love to the nation, to the world. Father, we call that into being in Jesus' name. 
that's going to be your time. So Father God, you asked us to go into the highways, and we anointed every highway on the border of Nebraska just for you. And Father, you said that you would anoint, if we would anoint, that you would put it on fire. So we pray now the fire of God of Nebraska, inside and outside, in every one of you people's hearts, be on fire for the Lord because he said so. Jesus. Adonai Elohim, we come to you this day. We see what happens in our world. We see that the principalities and powers of the prince and the power of the year have said, we stand against you, but not this day. This day, there will be a crack in the heavens. The light and the fire of your spirit will fall in every heart, every mind will be transformed by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we come before you. We give you all the glory and all the praise because you alone are worthy. Lord, I want to thank you for all these little children that I see here because you said the kingdom is such. Father, I pray that you would have your way with everyone here and everyone that here that we know. Lord, that you would break hearts and that you would bring us all to you. Thank you for so loving us. How's it sound? Does it sound okay? All that right. Sounds good. I know it's kind of faint. Holy is the Lamb! Yeah, I, Holy I, is the Lamb! Just, Holy just watch this in the wedding. Bring our hearts together! Bring our hearts together! Unify us in you! Father God, we pray together! We unite with you! You want anything? You want water? I mean, I have this. Fire! It's just lyrics, basically, now. When TV USA gets back up, then you go to their slides. We praise you, God. We praise you. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that you exalt your holy name. Be exalted, be magnified, be lifted up, Lord, that all men would be drawn to you. Every man, every woman, every child in this state, oh God, we declare that you are Lord. And Jesus, that you would fall in this place. Let your fire fall in this place. Let your fire fall in these neighborhoods. Father God, over the businesses, over the entrepreneur, Lord, let your fire fall in this place. Right now, in hearts, the fear of the Lord in each one of us tonight. It is all such with the fear. And I'm going to say, fearless sons and daughters of the Most High God, worship our demandingly tonight. We're here for the audience of one. Jesus, not that a bad man is here. Come, come, Papa. Come, come. All for you. Father Paul, open heaven. Thank you for the greatest fair show tonight. In the heavenlies, every power and every principality be gone in Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us and covers the grass. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we bow our knees tonight in humility and we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord over the state of Nebraska. We ask for your kingdom to come. We ask for your will to be done right here in Nebraska as you have ordained it to be in heaven. We thank you, God, that you're opening the eyes of our spiritual understanding. We thank you that you're opening our ears to be able to hear. We give you our hearts and ask you, God, to reveal your perfect will for each and every one of us, God, that we can go forth and bring your kingdom to bear into our sphere of influence. We lift you up tonight and we give you all the praise. Lord God, the enemy thought he had this city. He thought he had this state. But Jesus says, it is mine. Holy Spirit, fall! Fire, fall! If you don't know it, you will tonight because the fire of God comes! Praise the Lord, Father. I thank you, 
continue your moving in rural Nebraska. Father, we declare your glory. Push back the kingdom of darkness. Release your anointing, Lord. Let it flow. Let the eyes of your understanding be opened up that they might see your glorious work that you're doing, Father. And Lord, we release your blessing, your blessing over the country and the land of rural Nebraska in Jesus' name. Let your request be made known with thanksgiving. So let's just thank the Lord right now. Lord, we thank you for men like Sean Floyd. Lord, we thank you for pastors and for women warriors, God. They can stand for you. that refuse the vow to fail in this society. Lord, that refuse to be frustrated by the spirit of Jezebel. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything you're doing and everything you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name. All right, you guys ready to release the sound? Come on, why don't you guys come up here on the count of three. We're going to release the sound. I know that this city, people have heard the sound of football. They've heard the sound of worship to other things. But tonight, we're enthroning King Jesus over this state capital. So on the count of three, I want you to lift up a shout that's never it's been heard blue. before not, in this state. Blue. Over this yeah, city, are the you camera, ready? It's not the, are you ready? Sharon looks fine at the wall. Sharon looks fine. What about on your phone? Amen, amen, amen. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to worship? Well, listen, we uh, pretty blown away at the hospitality here in Nebraska because I didn't know the Blue Angels were going to open for Let Us Worship. And uh, we got inspired by the Blue Angels and by the, the air show, and so we thought we would do something special tonight that we don't even normally do at Let Us Worship, but let's honor our country tonight. Can we do that? By the dawn to the eye, once so proudly revealed at the twilight's last gleam, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous night o'er the
Come on, we gotta have a little fun tonight. Turn to someone next to you, say get free. Say get free. Come on, put your hands together. This is the day you celebrate. Anything can happen. This is the place for the sound of faith. Echo like it in Get free, get free, get free Gonna pray so loud Heaven's gonna hear me Get free, get free From the inside out I can't hold, sing it out Get free Now Get free This is no way to no celebrate. Anything can happen. Let miracles break out. In Jesus' name, faith in me is rising. Anything can happen. Let miracles break out. Come on, we're going to dance a little bit. Here for a concert, 
We're not here for a nice event. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus above Lincoln, above the government, above the city. We're here to say that the government rests upon his shoulders. So, come on, put your hand in. Come on, just sing this one. Come on, sing Jesus. Come on, sing Jesus. Jesus. Come on, sing Jesus. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Sing Jesus. Come on, sing Jesus. Jesus. Come on, sing Jesus. Jesus. Come on, let's get it up. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, Jesus. to come here to Nebraska. We've had it circled on our calendar. And this is our second to last city for 2023. And I felt like we're gonna end it off with just a bang. We're gonna end it off. And I believe tonight, none of you are here by accident. I believe tonight God is gonna break off apathy, depression, hopelessness, discouragement, He's already beginning to show me things that he's going to do tonight. But I was getting on my, my flight to, to come. Last night we were in Pierre, South Dakota, which is uh, hard to get to. <laughs> and I was in LAX and I was like, hate flying out of LA, but I, I got on my plane and it's, I'm looking around me and it's like half the people in the airport are like doing the mask thing again. I'm like, guys, guys, we can't, we can't do this anymore. We can't do this anymore. We can't buy into fear. We can't buy into manipulation. It's time to get free. And, and, and I started to get angry, and the Lord was reminding me, Sean, don't get angry. Your greatest weapon is joy. Your greatest weapon is joy. And I was like, get me to Nebraska as fast as I can, please. But I want to sing because I believe, you know, the election COVID variant is on its way, apparently. And the anxiety and the heaviness and the economic turmoil and the election and blah, 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 blah. Everything possible to get you irritated, frustrated, upset, angry. And I'm telling you tonight, Nebraska, joy is your weapon. The crazier it gets, the more joyful we become. And listen, I'm not telling you that as somebody that doesn't experience pushback. I'm the number one COVID violator in 29 states. I've been persecuted, harassed by Antifa, by Satanists, by governors, by legislators. I understand the fight, but I'm telling you tonight, you got to get your joy back. 
I want to sing this as a prophetic song over the state. It goes like this. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell can hold me up. A fire inside gonna light it up. It's joy. Oh, Take joy. There's a joy. There's a joy deep down that I can't it's shut up. No force of hell. Hold me up, a fire inside gonna light up. It's joy, take joy. Come on, sing with me. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell can hold me up. A fire inside gonna light it up. It's joy, take joy. There's a joy. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell. Hold me up, a fire inside, gonna light it up. It's joy, take joy. Now listen, when you say it's joy, take joy, you gotta do it with that annoyingly cheesy churchy smile. Alright, like look at somebody. It's joy, take joy. Try it again, let's try it again, come on. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up, no force of hell. You hold me up, a fire inside gonna Here we go. It's joy, take joy. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell. Hold yeah. me up, a fire inside gonna light it up. It's joy, take joy. Go ahead and go to empty slide. Are you ready? Come on, let's sing this over your skin. Here we go.
that we are in a spiritual war. Some of you are with me. We're in the middle of a spiritual war. People are finally starting to wake up. It's happening all around us. And the beautiful thing about worship 
I'm not interested in concerts or entertainment or any of that stuff. The thing about worship is, is that when we join together like we are right now, all of heaven comes into agreement. Well, I don't know, Sean, that sounds kind of weird. That sounds kind of crazy. Well, read the book of Hebrews. It says, angels upon angels gather in joyful assembly. Now, I don't know what was happening in this building this week. I don't know what bills were being fought over. I don't know what budgets they were dealing with. But what I do know is that today, this is Mount Zion. (laughs) Today, this is the city of the living God. I don't know what ideologies are being pushed at the university in the campus. I don't know what is being propagated, but I'll tell you what's happening right now. All of heaven is joining the people of God. In fact, sometimes when I go to these capitals, I I feel like it's almost like (laughs) like the, the angels, it's almost like they're waiting. They're like, finally, they showed up. Break off the heaviness and break off the heaviness. Break off the heaviness. Bring joy, 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 joy. We say, break off the heaviness. Come on, somebody. And break off the heaviness. Break off the heaviness. Bring joy, joy, joy. Come on, sing with me. Come on, sing with me. And break off the heaviness. Break off the heavy across the state of Nebraska. The heaviness bring joy, 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 joy. We say, break off the heaviness. And break off the heaviness. Come on, sing it out. Sing it out across the state. Come on, from this place, break off. Break off the heaviness. Break off the heaviness. Break off. The heaviness bring joy, 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 joy. We say, break off the heaviness. Break off the heaviness. Break off the heaviness. Bring joy, joy. It may look like, it may look like, oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. I can hear those liberty bells rattling, rattling the gates of hell. (laughs) I can hear those liberty bells ringing, they're ringing. Come on, it's time to ring the bell over Nebraska, ring the bells over Nebraska. I can hear those liberty bells rattling, rattling the gates of hell. And I can hear those liberty bells ringing, ringing. Come on, let's ring the bells. Let's ring the bells. Come on, just put your hands together. Come on, it's time to ring the bell. It's time to ring the bell tonight.
Just sing that out, sing that out, sing that out. In fire and wind, come and do it again. Come rest on us. And come rest on us. Oh, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come. Come on, this is what I want you to do. Just begin to lift your hands. Come on, just begin to thank him. Thank him for what he's doing in this state. Thank him for what's happening in this region. Thank him for the outpouring of his spirit. Thank him that it's only just begun. Thank him that tonight a fire is going to be lit. A fire is going to be lit that will not go out in Nebraska. Come on, just begin to thank him tonight. Come rest on us, 
rest on us as the spirit was moving over the water spirit come move over us come rest on us come come on sing it out come down oh yeah come down when you feel the room you're here and i know you are moving i'm here and i know you
Lord, tonight we just say, as we're gathered here, thousands of believers, God, we just say, we are all out of political solutions. We are all out of economic solutions. God, we just place our dependence on you tonight. We say you are the only hope for our nation. You are the only hope for our cities. You're the only hope for our state. You're the only hope for our campuses, in our universities, in our schools, in our businesses. God, you are the only answer. There comes a moment, and I believe we're here right now in America, where we got no more options. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to be in, actually. We got no more options. And so as we were approaching this journey, to me, I feel like it's, a, it's not a really a tour, it's a, it's a procession. It's a holy procession. And, you know, we had held the largest gatherings in America and really around the world with, in the height of lockdown. We had seen God do amazing things. And to be really honest, I was ready for like a break. <laughs> I was ready for a sabbatical. <laughs> And God began to release the next mandate, which was to go capital to capital. And, and it happened, I was standing on the steps of the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. And we had just prayed 40 days. We had marched around the Supreme Court. Yes, we're those crazy Christians, that's us. We're crazy. And I, I just got to tell you, if you're here at Let Us Worship, <laughs> guilty by association. <laughs> if you love Jesus and you love your country, somehow that's controversial. I don't understand it. But anyway, so we're standing at the Supreme Court, and I'm about to strum the first chord on the first ever worship service in post-row America. Can you guys believe this? I, I've been praying since I was a teenager. I was always told it's impossible. But God. A 50-year prayer request. He's not slow as some understand slowness. So I'm there and I'm... I, I, and we're celebrating the reversal of the death decree of Roe v. Wade. And the Lord begins to share, show me the capital cities. And how the battle for the church and the battle for the next season, the battle for the fight for life, religious liberty, for the future of our children was coming to every single state capital. And just so you know, this is not like a, a really fun, like, CCM, Texas, Florida worship tour. This is a tour of the most ghetto cities in America. I mean, nothing against Lincoln. This seems like a nice city. <laughs> but when you look at the capital cities, they are the highest crime. They are the most dysfunctional. They are the, filled with the most bureaucracy, and they're the most resistant to the gospel message. And here we come, capital to capital. And so I'm getting ready, right? I'm like calling all my friends, Alliance Defending Freedom, First Liberty, all the lawyers. I'm like, we're going to have to fight, man. They're going to let drag queens do their thing, but they don't want the church to pray. So I said, we're going to have to fight, right? So I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. And the Lord speaks to me one morning in California. I'm seeking the Lord. He says, Sean, you, you can't fight this battle the way that you fought in the last season. He says, you're going to win this battle, capital to capital to capital, on your knees, 
taking communion in prayer. Because the blood of Jesus is enough. I want you guys to hold up your communion. Did you get communion? Come on, lift it up if you got it. Anybody need communion out there? The kids need one. <laughs> if you're lifting up your hand, if you need communion, put it down if you already have it, but lift it up if you need communion. We want to serve everybody. We've been doing this at 25 state capitals. In the rain, in the hay, in the snow. And here we are. And God's given us a beautiful day. Now, I know that this town's used to red, but we're talking about a whole different kind of red. Amen. All right, so lift your hand if you need communion. Now, the Lord spoke to me about taking this on my knees in humility. So that's what I'm going to do. You can feel free to join me. This may be the most powerful thing that we do together today. I love what the media says, you know, they're like, these dangerous Christians, these insurrectionists are going capital to capital, then they show up and we're on our knees. <laughs> it ruins their narrative. <laughs> this is warfare. And so I want you to, to take your communion and open it up and take out the bread, which is... Um, might be gluten-free, I don't know. We're in Nebraska, no one cares. First Corinthians 11, it says, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So I want you just to hold up the bread. And I want everybody here just to begin to thank, thank him for his body that was broken. Come on, use your own words. Come on, thank him. His body that was broken for you, your sins, your compromise, your apathy, your addictions. Every curse that's come upon your family, his body was broken. on, let's take this together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come on, I just want you to hold up the blood. Lord, we thank you tonight that the blood of Jesus is enough for Nebraska. We thank you, Jesus, that the blood of Jesus is enough for every curse, every amount of corruption, every sin, every past failure, all of the crime, all of the corruption, all of the hopelessness, all the depression, all the stuff, God, we thank you tonight. We declare your blood is enough. The blood of Jesus is enough for the government. It's enough for the bureaucracy, God. It is enough for our own sins, our own failures, our own shortcomings. Your blood is enough. Come on, I just want you to thank him tonight. Thank him for his blood. Come on, use your voice. Use your voice. Use your words. Come on, let's take it together.
told you the bells were going to ring. <laughs> the freedom bells. <laughs> If you think that's a coincidence, you're crazy. <laughs> In all precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. In nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, sing it with me, oh precious. Come on, sing it out. Oh, and oh, precious is the flow. And that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. And nothing but the blood Come on, sing, what can wash away my sins? Oh, in what can wash away? Come on, sing it over your state. In nothing but, woo! Come on, what can make me whole again? So precious, so precious. Come on, everybody. Point of Just say his name, Jesus. Come on, say his name over your state. Jesus, your blood. Your blood speaks a better word. I 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus <laughs> till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Oh, I speak Jesus. Come on, sing it out. Because your name is power. Your name your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, and burn like a fire. <laughs> and I just want to speak the name of Jesus. for my family oh I speak the holy name of Jesus come on lift your hands and sing that out so shout Jesus for the Lord ha has given me a key that I believe is going to unlock something tonight for people here. I, I just, I have this, we've been, as we've gone city to city, it's just like the presence of God has just grown stronger and stronger and, and we've seen greater manifestations of 
of glory and salvations and signs and wonders and seen families restored and people get delivered and I believe all that's going to happen tonight and I actually get the privilege tomorrow <laughs> 6 50 a.m. I get to preach to America on Fox and Friends so I'm, I'm excited about that but but I feel like uh, like I just want to talk about Nebraska The beef of Nebraska. The hunting of Nebraska. So many things in Nebraska I love. The people of Nebraska. You guys have it really good if you live here. Trust me, I've been a lot of places. Come on, y'all know that? Great, great people here. Great state. And I feel like that... that the church in Nebraska in, in, in many ways represents a lot of the churches in, in states that we go to where they love God, they love the nation, they hate to see what's happening to the country, and they want to stand up and do the right thing. And COVID was really a, a it was really a test. It's, it's not the last test, it's probably the first of many tests. So, you know, if you failed that test, don't worry, there's another test coming. Just buckle up, buttercup. You know, learn from the last test and, and do better. Amen. And that's for pastors and leaders and business owners. And like we all, we all got to learn and move past the shame of the last season and move into greater boldness and greater authority. But, but here's the thing. Revelation 2 talks about the church of Ephesus, which probably a lot of you guys know, which was a great church and widely known and very rich with resources and wealth. And I mean, Nebraska is a very, very resource-rich place. And, and the, the thing that's crazy about this, when you, when you look at the book of Revelation, this is like the only church that starts out where he starts talking about it and he says a lot of good things. Like the others, it's just like, whoa. <laughs> he starts out with Ephesus and he says, it says, I know your deeds, I know your hard work, I know your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. I know that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You've persevered, you've endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Like that's all really good stuff. It's like, man, thanks, Lord. We're doing pretty good here in Nebraska. Right? We're standing up for what's right and making sure that we bring godly definition to marriage and family and doing all the things we're called to do, right? Those are all important, right? Very important things. But here's the kicker about Ephesus. Everything is negated with this one statement. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. You forgot what it all is about. You've gotten to the motions. You've gotten to the mechanisms. You've got into religion. You've got into the program and the performance and the plan and you know what's coming you know whatever but you've missed the whole point of it all. Intimacy. Burning for Jesus. Living a life that's surrendered to Christ. I'm telling you in America it's not enough to just be a great conservative. That doesn't save our country. We have to be on fire for Jesus. And I speak a lot in the conservative movement and a lot of times it's just as bad. It's just as hopeless. There's just as much debauchery and compromise and sin. And I'm like, you may have the right principles, but you got no heart, man. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. It's not enough. To just say the right things and vote the right way and do the right thing and just walk around like this robot. No, God says, I want your heart. 
says this. And I, this is a personal message for me. I'm going to tell you why, but it says, I hold this against you. You've forsaken your first love. Consider how far you've fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place. And I, I had this feeling, guys, I'm going to be really honest. I was, so the end of last year, you know, we just, <laughs> we had more pushback and more resistance and yet also more glory. I mean, I had three albums that I got, you know, blackballed by the music industry and cast aside because I broke all the COVID protocols because I wanted to actually live our songs in a dark time. But, you know, God honored what we did. I had four albums that went number one on all of iTunes over every genre. I had all this stuff, right? And the ministry's pumping and, you know, we're building a database of people that are support us and we got this social media thing and, and it's just all cranking and the Lord just comes and invades my heart one night. He says, Sean, don't lose the fire. And he started reminding me of when I was 15 and 16 years old. And I knew like three chords. I know like four now, four and a half. And I would just sit in my bedroom at night and I would just worship and I would just burn for God. And I didn't care about ministry or, or people knowing me or, or songs or albums or downloads or iTunes or Spotify or hits or YouTube or being known or Instagram. I didn't know about any of that. I just wanted the presence of God. I knew that if I just had the presence of God, me plus God equals a majority. And so I, in the midst of all the craziness of our life and ministry and four kids and, and it's just, ah, traveling and all these nonprofits and all these things, the Lord just called me back to wake up early in the morning and stay up at night and get my guitar out and just begin to burn for Him again. And I'm telling you, it did something to me. It simplified everything that was complicated. It caused me to focus in again. It moved away the offenses that I had and the discouragement that I had and the, the hard-heartedness that I had. And sometimes you don't even know it's there. And I just feel like tonight, this is the first thing I want to say. I believe God has come here to this capital to set hearts on fire again. And I love it. I love, I love singing the national anthem. And I love, we played Top Gun a minute ago. That was fire. I love the Blue Angels. I, lo I love it all. But it's not enough to just say what's right and do what's right and try to live what's right. We got to have a heart that's turned towards Jesus. We got to have a heart that's on fire. That's the only thing that will change this nation. I love what, what John Wesley said. Set myself on fire, the world will come and watch me burn. And I just believe tonight, and this is what I want to do. If you guys in the front there will just move back, maybe 10 steps. Just want to create an altar right here. And this is a moment where I believe this is not this, this part of the night where we just do this thing and blah, 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 blah. No, I believe tonight is special. This is holy ground. This is anointed. This is a place, man, where God is going to reignite dreams and hearts and lives. There's people in here that he's showed me that have given up. And you're just on autopilot. And you think it's enough. And you're just going to coast out your days. And God says, no, I love you too much. I want your whole heart. There's some people here that you've been doing church thing and conservative thing and whatever thing. And you have never really fully surrendered. You've never really given Jesus your all. And I believe tonight in this moment, as you surrender and as you respond, He is going to launch you to a level you've never known before. 
but it always comes with intimacy. It's like a bow. He pulls us back deep into his heart so then he can shoot us out. It's hunting season, so I got a lot of hunting metaphors. But tonight is a night, this is a moment right now where if you're here and you're like, Sean, that resonates with me. That resonates with me. I'm here tonight and I just got to say, God, I want my heart set on fire again. I don't want to be like the church of Ephesus that, that checks all the boxes, but the most important box, the most important part is not surrender. If that's you around this place, on the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand. Be honest, be real. There's no shame. God did not come to shame. He came to bring an increase. He came to bring an anointing. Come on, one, two, three. If that's you, just lift your hand. Come on. Come on, I know there's more than that. Lift your hand if that's you. You're just like, God, tonight set my heart on fire. Come on, keep those hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now you can put it down, and this is what I want to do. I want to respond. I don't want to take long doing this, but I feel like all of heaven sees this. When we acknowledge him before men, he acknowledges us in heaven. And tonight is not just a night where we set up a bunch of speakers and a stage and brought in abandoned buses and did all this. Tonight is a night where hearts are going to be lit on fire and lives are going to be forever changed. So if that's you on three, I just want you to come down here and join me right down here at the front. And just get on your knees and just begin to give them your heart. One, two, three. Come on, come on, come down front. Come on, come on, from all over. Come on. Come on. I just want you to get on your knees. Come on. Get on your knees and just start pouring out your heart. Come on. Just start pouring out your heart. Come on. Just start pouring out your heart. Say, God, set me on fire again. Come on. Set me on fire again. Set me on fire again, Lord. Come on. Just begin pouring it out. Come on. Just pour it out. Just pour it out. Just pour out your love. Come on, I know there's some more people out there. Come on, don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment tonight. Don't miss this moment tonight. If that's you, this is a powerful moment that will forever be remembered in your life. Don't miss this. Come on. I know there's some more out there. Come on, I see you. I see you coming. Come on, make room for these guys. Come on, make room for these guys. wrecking people all over this place. Come on, if you're down here, I just want you to lift your hands. I want you to pray this with me. Say, King Jesus. Come on, every voice. Say, King Jesus. Tonight, I give you everything. Tonight, would you 
set my heart on fire. Lord, tonight I repent for my apathy, for my hard-heartedness, for my disappointment. And I ask you, Lord, fill me with hope. Fill me with joy. Fill me with fire, with fire, with holy fire. Come on, just keep praying, keep praying. I'm going to ask some of these pastors and leaders. I want you just to come down and begin to lay hands on some of these that are down here. Come on, just walk through, move through the crowd. Just lay hands on them, pray over them, prophesy over them. Come on, I need more. There's a lot of people up here. Come on, if you're a pastor or a leader or you love Jesus, you're in one of these amazing churches, I want you to come and lay hands. Come on, I want you to pray over them. I want you to speak over them, prophesy over them. Some people are rededicating. Some people are asking God to set their heart on fire. Some people are first time giving their life to Jesus. Come on, just pray over them. Just sing that with me. Come on, my heart. In my heart burns. It burns for you. In my heart burns. It burns for you. Come on, in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart. I believe there's some people here that have been been battling intense oppression, heaviness, depression, even people here that have contemplated or tried to commit suicide. I want you to be honest. If you're one of those, lift your hands up. Come on, no shame. Come on, lift your hands up. I got one here, one here, one back there. Come on, look at these, lift them up. Come on, be honest. One over there. If you're around these folks, lay your hand on them right now. And I just want you to begin to declare life. Come on, begin to declare life over them. We break off the spirit of death and suicide in Jesus' name. 
All anxiety, you got to go. All heaviness, you got to go. In Jesus' name, we claim their life. We claim their destiny. We claim their future. Come on, I want you to pray over them. Pray over them as if their life depends on your prayer. Come on. Come on, while they're praying over them, I'm getting another thing. I really believe that there's people here that have been battling identity issues. Identity issues. The enemy has come to attack you for your identity. He's come to attack you. He's come to try to prove to you that you are not fearfully and wonderfully made. Try to prove to you that you're screwed up, that you're messed up, that you were made wrong and made in the wrong gender, made in the wrong whatever. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand up. Come on, there's freedom tonight. Come on, one right here. Lift your hand up. Anybody else? Come on, don't miss this moment. Come on, anybody else? A whole generation is battling this intensely. If we do not start getting real about this issue, we will lose a generation. Come on, if you've been battling anything dealing with identity, lift your hand. Come on, we got one back there, one over there. Come on, surround them. Begin to pray over them. Begin to speak life over them. Begin to speak God's divine design over their life. Lord, tonight gathered here in Lincoln, we break off every spirit of perversion over this town. We release the identity. You are sons. You are daughters of the living God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Come on, I just feel the, the arms of the Father are embracing you tonight. Young woman, young man. Come on, brother, you're made in his image. Sister, you're made in his image, in his likeness. We break off the lies of the enemy. Come on, as we're doing this, keep praying. Charles, where are you at? Charles, I want you to come up here. It's my brother Charles. I want him. As, keep praying if you're, if you're with those people. But Charles, we've been rolling together for the last three years all across America. Started in Minneapolis where a riot was taking place, where George Floyd died, and we worshiped together. And a riot turned into a revival in his city. But, but Charles is carrying something really, 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 really special tonight. And I want him to release this. I feel this over this state. Today, his daughter gave her life to Jesus. She's been running. Two weeks ago, his son gave his life to Jesus. He's been running. Can I tell you something? God is in the business of restoring families tonight. Thank you, Sean. We've been on a journey of three years of really fighting for our family. In 2020, we began a journey of having prodigals in our own home. Even as we were going across America, seeing so many people coming to Jesus, we were battering this whole thing of rebellion of our own family and our children running away from God. And it is so painful when you watch people you brought up in the Lord walking away from the very things that you gave them as a foundation. And it cost us to begin a prayer and an intercession for the return of prodigals. God began to move in other families before he moved in ours. There is a family in our community where we pastor that has had prodigals for 25 years and they were in drug addiction and they all, six of them, came to Jesus in the last six months. But our family had not yet received what we were praying for. But we continued doing it. But I'll tell you what, the last two weeks, it has been 
a move of a visitation of heaven in our home. The prodigals are coming back. And I'm here tonight to release hope to you. We have even seen those who are coming back from LGBTQ community. We've seen them come back from a drug addiction community. But I'll tell you what tonight, nobody is too far gone for God. Nobody. Nobody. And I want to do this for you tonight. If you're here and you need to see your prodigal's return, I'm going to pray a prayer that we've been praying. And I'm going to also ask you to do something on top of that. I want you to be a part of ministries like this one of John Foyt that is going all over the nation, bringing people to Jesus. And I'll tell you what the Lord gave me as a promise. What you make happen for my house, I'll make it happen for your house. Let me tell you, God is going to bring revival to those houses that are helping fund the fires of revival in America. Are you ready for that tonight? Now put those hands up, Father, in the name of Jesus. I cry out for all the prodigals to come back. And they are coming back, oh God, from all kinds of backgrounds and lifestyles. We even pray for those who are coming from the LGBTQ community. Father, we pray the love of God that never fails will find them even when they make their bed in hell. You will be there, oh God. Lord, I pray. This is one prayer we've been praying. Lord, I pray no matter what path they take, They'll fight Jesus at the end of that path. They'll fight Jesus. They'll fight Jesus. And he'll call them back to you. We pray for encounters of heaven. We pray for great grace where you awaken them from the slumber. And they'll come back running in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God a shout. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope in Jesus' name. Come on, I want to do something. I, I believe one of the reasons this generation, I have four kids that are Gen Zers. One of the reasons this generation is so attacked is because they have one of the greatest mandates on their life. Right? The ones that, that the it's, it's, it's like Moses, you know, the ones that, that are deliverers are the ones that the enemies come to kill. The ones the enemies come after to remove and I, I just I want to do this tonight as a prophetic sign because like this is a big deal I mean this is a big deal that we're doing this but we've been praying for this for three years come on this just happened today today on my way here quite honestly I was <laughs> in the car coming and my wife called me <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is is that, is that just a few days ago I was in Spokane, in, in Gavin City in Spokane, and, and, and the, the, the Gen Z or crazy guy that stole my guitar was on stage, gave his life to Jesus. <laughs> it's crazy, man. God is in the business of redemption. And so if you are a Gen Z or I want you to lift your hand. You know if you are. You're probably on TikTok. Okay. Just kidding. All right, lift your hand. Come on, keep them up. This is what we want to do. We want to commission this generation tonight. You are the deliverers. Actually, come on, Gen Z, I want you to come up front here. Come on, all of you come up front here. Come on, I know it's annoying, but come on, do it. Come on, even those of you in the back, Gen Z, come up here. Come on, guys, give them a hand as they come up. Listen. Joel chapter 2 says this, your young men will dream dreams, your old men will see, or your, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Don't be the stuffy old people that whine about the next generation. 
be the old people that are dreaming the dreams of God for the next generation. All right, Gen Z, look at these guys. You're so happy. You look nothing like they told me you would look. <laughs> Come on, we got more. We got more Gen Zers. Come on, this is awesome. Listen, this is what they're saying. They're saying Gen Z is a lost cause. Gen Z doesn't care. Gen Z is depressed. Gen Z is confused. I'm telling you, I am seeing a revival among Gen Z. All across America, it's happening. And I just say, hey, Lincoln, why not here? Why not here? Omaha, why not here? So come on, all you millennials, which is me, and you older people that are really old. No, I'm just kidding. Extend your hand. All right, Gen Z, just lift your hands up. Come on, Gen Z. Come on. And I just want you to begin to ask God tonight. Say, God, give me your fire. Come on, give me your fire. Give me your fire. Give me your fire. Lord, we just pray tonight over this beautiful generation, all these Gen Zers that are out here. God, they are marked by your love. They're marked by your fire. And we pray tonight, God, Lord, set them apart for the works of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that no devil in hell can hold down the destiny that you have over their life. They are marked for Jesus. They are marked for the God. They are marked for a destiny to change and shift their generation. And we call out those who are going to be Joseph. We call those who are going to be Esther's of this generation. We call out the Daniels of this generation. We call out come on, revivalists come on, come on, of come on, this come on, generation. Come on. We call you up right now and we commission you to go take revival to your come on, generation. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus, receive the fire. Come on, just say fire. 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 Fire.
<laughs> Heaven just took a picture. Lord, we thank you tonight. You're marking Generation Z. We thank you tonight. We say over Nebraska, the enemy cannot have this generation. And we declare tonight, God, let a revival begin in the high schools, in the junior high, on the campuses across this region, God. Flip the script on the enemy. Flip the script on the enemy as he's tried to confuse this generation. God, may they stomp on the head of the serpent. Come on, look to someone and say, we're going to burn. Say, we're going to burn. <laughs> Lord, we thank you tonight that you're marking us. God, we thank you tonight, Lord. Nebraska will never be the same again. Man, I'm just so wrecked. We're going to party in a minute. You guys ready to party? I want to do two things before we celebrate as the sun goes down. First thing I want to do, I just want to invite you to be a part of what God's doing with this movement. As you know, this is, this is crazy, right, to do this here. Has this ever happened in front of the Capitol here? I feel like this is a historical moment. We might have to do this every year, you know. If I timed it one week later, it would have been right during hunting season. It would have been perfect. However, listen, I want to throw this up on the screen. I want you guys to be a part of what we're doing. We need a lot of help. We need encouragement. We need prayers. We need support. This is a very costly endeavor. We don't want to give a sacrifice that costs us nothing. Amen? Amen. Are you with me? So before we leave tonight, I, wanna, I want us to give an offering to Revival in America tonight. Tomorrow we're going to be in Des Moines, and this will finish 27 state capitals. Millions of dollars have been wasted at the feet of Jesus in worship in these capital cities. And guess what? We're not finished 27 cities we have 23 more next year, if my math's right. And we end this whole thing on the National Mall one week before the election next year. How many think we need some prayer before the election next year? Well, our dream is to have the largest worship service in the nation next year on the National Mall. I hope we have some wild Nebraska people that are going to join us. So I want you to get your phone out because you guys are generous people. Come on, get your phone out. Even if you're a young person, we give a couple bucks. It, it's, it's something powerful is going to happen tonight as we sow. These are the ways that you can give. I believe God has blessed Nebraska to be a blessing to the world. Amen? Amen. Are you with me? Wave your hand if you're with me. God has blessed Nebraska to be a blessing to the world. And I felt like he spoke to me tonight that this is going to be a place that resources revival to the nation. And it's funny because people call these places a flyover state and a this and a that. But what they don't know is there's gold in the people here. There's people that believe America can be changed. And so you can open up your phone. You can text this number. 77977. Someone say it with me. 77977. And you text, let us worship, all one word. Let us worship, all one word. Text it. Push pay will, a link will pop up on your phone. How many of you guys are getting that link? Come on, you getting that link? Wave at me if you're getting that link. Let us worship, no spaces, to 77977. You can also go on Venmo at Let Us Worship. You can go online if you want to go to lettuceworship.us. And if you don't trust the government or your phone or the internet, you can always give a check or you can give cash. I don't know. 
All right, I think we got buckets. Let's do that. If we have them, do we have them with us? Okay. Now, don't put money in any other buckets but the ones we have. Trust me, a lot of things have happened. Um, I believe we got, what do our buckets look like? Oh, we have a box. Oh, we're, we're high tech tonight. So we have a box, a brown box. If you want to give um, cash, you can give into this. I know you Nebraska people, man. You got Watts cash. You can give this. Or you can also give um, check. If you want to make out a check, you can make out your check to SFM. Say that with me, SFM. And you can fill it out, put it in the box. Before you leave, I want you guys to do something special. I want you to go and lay hands and pray over our bus. Pray for Holy Spirit gas mileage. Pray that we would make it as we drive through the night. And then it would continue where we sleep on this bus. We pray on this bus. We Last night, I mean, I, I, I got to, I need to talk to your legislatures, man. Your roads are something else here. Holy smokes. I mean, we've driven through a lot of states, and I was like, what is happening? Oh, we got, we got, yeah, here we go. Kentucky Fried Chicken Bucks. All right. Get, you can get some people. So you can put cash in these. You can put a check in there if you always want to pass them through. And as you're doing that, I want to say this. We would not be able to do this tour if it wasn't for our partnership with TPUSA Faith. Can we just thank God for them? Gavin is here, which helps get all the permits for every single state capital. Can we give it up for Gavin back here? And guess what? He's not with his family. He's here on his birthday. Today is Gavin's birthday. And so slip him a 20 and a high five before you leave. But listen, we're so grateful to partner with TPUSA Faith. As those buckets are going around, I want to invite Nicole to come up. Nicole's amazing. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You're awesome. Go for it. Wow. Well, church, what an amazing night. How many of you feel the Holy Spirit in the midst of Lincoln, Nebraska tonight? Give it up for Jesus. Man, there's a reason to have hope in this country. And it comes from Jesus. And Jesus alone, he's the only one that can solve the societal issues that we are seeing in our culture today. And that's exactly what we're seeing is, is spiritual warfare in the culture, attacking the, uh, attacking the children, attacking the church. The church has lost its footing, its solid ground, which is rooted in the word of God. And so at TPUSA Faith, our mission is to serve and give free educational resources to pastors and Christians across the nation. And so we wanna bless you with a free resource tonight we are blessed to be here to worship in the capital, but what's next? How are we going to use tonight to go out and be salt and light into our culture like God calls us to be? So I want everyone to get out their phones. You can scan our QR code right here. But if you get out your phones, we want to give you a free resource to take with you home tonight to start doing it in your small groups, to have group discussions with friends and your family. So if, I want you to text this number. 71776. 71776. And the word you're going to text is revival. Revival. And we want to give you a resource to take home with you to effectively understand what it means to be a biblical Christian in our society. Because, yes, like it or not, we have to be salt and light in our culture. We have to have what God values in every facet of society. We need strong, bold Christians to be in our universities. Yes, to run and, and run for office within the government so we can be missionaries in the halls of government to pass biblical legislation, to honor God in everything we do in, in our daily life. And so we wanna bless you with this free resource here. Take it home with you and use it. We want you to stop by our TPUSA Faith Tent to get involved with us. Someone from our team will directly reach out to you to help get these educational resources in the church and, and in your local community. And so we want to come alongside you and partner with you to see what God has for us into this next generation, into the next chapter of America, because God is not done. How many of you believe that God is not done with America yet? He's not done with this great country. 
founded on Judeo-Christian values. Don't let, don't let the lies penetrate the way you think. We are a, Ju- we are a Judeo-Christian founded nation. Our founding fathers were Bible-believing evangelical Christians. Don't let them, don't let them deteriorate the truth. Don't let them twist it and spin it. Remember, be on guard. Stay in the word. Stay sharp. Know your history. Because God has a very special place and a special purpose in this country. And it's up to us, disciples of Christ, to maintain that and preserve that. And so I just want to, I want to close this in prayer. If you would just lift your hands, please, and, and quiet your hearts. Lord God, we humbly come to you right now. We want to thank you for your presence, for the purpose that you have specifically for Lincoln, Nebraska, God. Lincoln, Nebraska, use it to be a pioneering state, God, for your glory and honor to win back Jesus in our culture, God. We believe that you have a purpose, God, a specific divine appointment for Lincoln, Nebraska, God. And we ask that you would use us, God, to send us as Isaiah asked, God. Isaiah raised his hand boldly and said, God, here am I. Send me. Church, we have to be the Isaiahs if we want to see true change in this nation. True change. And God, use us. Use us until you come, God, because this is not our home, but we know that we are called to occupy. God, to occupy until you're returning. And God, we have faith and we believe that America will turn its face back to you, God. We believe it and we ask that you use us to do this, God. We honor you. We praise you, Jesus. In your name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, we got a little bit of light left. We need to party, man. We need to party. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Come on, one more song. Listen, on your way out too, we have some merch in the back. Buy the Let Us Worship stuff. It helps us. It's awesome. It's actually great. I walk through airports and people ask for prayer and healing and it's <laughs> it's awesome. So get it in the back. I'll be back there signing books if you want a book sign. I'll see you. At 6.50 a.m., I know y'all are going to all wake up and watch Fox and Friends. Just kidding. You can, you can DVR it. All right, you ready? Here we go. Come on, everybody. Come on, here we go. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul This bag of bones And I tried with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond And just when
All right, let's do one more thing. Everyone get your phone out with your light on. Yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is going to look awesome. Oh, we have that banner too? We're going to get a, we always take a group picture together too. We want to do that because we want to tag all you guys on Facebook. Okay, they're looking for it. All right, we'll do a song where they can find it. All right, you ready? Here we go. Come on, dance with your light on. This is the day that the Lord has made. Anything can happen. This is the place for the sound of faith to echo. Like Come on, get free. Get free, get free. Gonna pray so loud. Heaven's gonna hear. Come on, that's amazing. Send that to the media. All right, listen, where's the banner at? Okay, everybody turn around and face that way. And pack in, because we want to get a group picture. Everybody, okay. <laughs> Gavin, stand up there so they can see you. Okay, you see this guy by the camera in the middle. You got to get towards the stage. You got to get over this way. Yeah, play the Top Gun song while they're doing that. It's going to get us hype. All right. Yeah, with some drums. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 